Hi, everybody, and welcome to this very special episode of the Dr. Keith Darrow podcast, where I welcome Sheila Thielen. Sheila, thank you so much for being here. And just so just so you all know, Sheila is is it's OK. My my fellow audiologists and hearing providers, Sheila is not a an audiologist or a hearing health care provider. But the reason I thought it was so important to have Sheila on here today is because she specializes in working with patients across the lifespan who have vestibular disorders. And if you're in hearing health care, there isn't a day that goes by that you don't work with a patient who's dizzy unsteady, room is spinning, right? So this is really important for everybody out there to pay attention to what Sheila can bring to us, the information about treating vestibular disorders and vestibular rehab. Sheila, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be on the show. Thank you. No, absolutely. Look, Sheila, I, I, you've got quite a bio. I think every time we've tried to either get on a phone call or get on a Zoom, you're traveling somewhere around the world giving talks, right? Your resume is expansive, working everywhere from Nike to NASA to, to you just told me you added a few more notches in your belt. But but rather than even dive into what you do, I would love to know why you do it. What is your what is your driving passion? I am obsessed, obsessed to the point my family is so sick of me, you know, like uh, this is all I want to do. This is all I want to talk about is really working with people, helping reset that vestibular, retrain it, fix it. It is fixable. And with that, I I work with everything from three-year-olds, children with autism, all the way through Olympians. And this is this is the work I love and I care about it. And I always talk about I want to change the world and not sound crazy when I say that. <laughs> yes, that is quite a lofty goal. How, I mean, all right, so now I'm going to push you on that one. How do you, with your expertise, change the world? So really... It, it's been really fun in working with so many different groups. And, and that's almost the, the weird part of it is that this vestibular system, how your eyes and ears process back into your brain, affects everyone with a brain. So really, I work with just so many groups. You know, I just worked with some aging population. You know, Yesterday, I got to work with a, a police officer and in improving his shooting scores and his balance at the same time. And I got to go to a gun range, you know, like I, I didn't see that in my future. And <laughs> it, was, it was fascinating to really see that, you know, in, in application in everyday life of how he improves his shooting scores that makes in his brain speed and his balance and, and, and really sleeps through the night better. I, I, I'm, I'm very troubled at the thought of a police officer who's dizzy with a gun, but I feel a lot safer now, (laughs) now that you have helped that person. So that's really interesting. It's really not just, you know, I think, I think in hearing healthcare, we're kind of like laser focused on, you know, is the room spinning? Is it BPPV? But there's really so much more to the balance system. And you already started to highlight it's it's not just the inner ear. It's the connections of the inner ear and the eyes and the entire proprioceptive system, your feet on the ground, your hands on the table, your butt in your seat. And that all comes together in the brain. So tell us more about that. So really, um, I'm, I'm teaming up with everyone, which is really, I think, the 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 best part of our company, Um, our chief medical officer, Dr. Daniel Daniel O'Brien talks, he calls it plug and play. Well, you just do my stuff for five minutes, my vestibular gear for five minutes, and then you go about as a professional, all the things you would normally do. Is it a reading program? Is it an autism program? Is it a balance program? Is it a PT program? Is it an audiology program? Like basically you just start with me for five minutes and then you do all the the laundry list that you'd normally do. Uh, And and that's, you know, the the easy applications. Uh, I laugh that half our sales actually go into people's homes, which sounds great. Like that sounds fine, but that's what we really want to do is really work with the professionals to be able to help hundreds of people you know, through your practices. And that way, more people can be helped, which is really the goal of the company. Interesting. So tell me the name of the company again. So the, the main 
company, we call ourselves vestibular training services. But I, I joke that I have the world's worst marketing guy because like people can't spell that. So we actually added a website of spinyourbrain.com because vestibular, you got to be able to spell that. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I, that's a great point. <laughs> Bad marketing dude, you know? Yeah. But, you know, well, so, so spring your brain. So sorry, spin your brain. Now, is that a place for professionals to go to, to try to link up with you? Is that a place for the average Joe who's, you know, just having difficulty walking down the hall without feeling like he's drunk, even though he didn't drink. Uh, so who's that for? You know, we have everyone on our website, you know, and it's obviously it links all to us. I do a lot of work on LinkedIn. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn because I've met so many people and and I do a whole thing on we're not a startup. We've been doing this for 30 years, wow, 30 okay. years as a master skating coach. But it's really just applying those world class sports training tools to the general population. And do you remember the old TV show, The Biggest Loser? Yes. Where they, yeah, it was a great show, but they applied world-class sports training to the general population with amazing results. Uh, we're, we're kind of the same scenario, but we're using all these years of sports training and athlete training and, and brain training. And really, if you look at a figure skater, that's an amazing athlete, you know, for the balance. Oh, oh forget it. I just, just watching a figure skater spin three times almost makes me want to throw up. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> it makes me do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's amazing. So, so yeah. So really it's using all that sports training, you know, and I always joked for years, I was this vestibular genius and I didn't know it. You know what I mean? Like I was just this, you know, turning, turning, balance, balance, turning, balance, and applying that to now the, the, the rest of the population. Well, I think I look, I, I can speak I can only speak for myself, but, but thinking about hearing healthcare and what I've seen, like when I was in school, I, I swear we had two hours of, of vestibular lectures. Mm -hmm. That was about it. And then we went out into the field and we learned about diagnosing vestibular disorders, but really within the realm of the inner ear mm -hmm. use. And, and, and if you look at our scope of practice, it really stops with diagnosing vestibular disorders, vestibular rehab does not fall into our realm, which is fine. And I'm not saying I wanted to, but to know that there are experts out there, what, what was your education like? What is your degree? How do you become a specialist in vestibular rehab? Well, so with us, we've, you know, this is part of where we have a chief medical officer. We also have a PhD research coordinator that, that handles all of these pieces within the company. I mean, as I am a master figure skating coach, but, you know, from the coaching and the sports world, I worked with so many athletes in so many scenarios that I just had to adjust to in the world of sports. Like I worked with kids with autism and kids with learning disabilities and, and kids with proprioception problems and kids with balance problems. And and elite athletes, but how did we turn them into elite athletes? And part of my job in life is just asking questions myself. Like, how come this kid can figure it out and this kid can't? Mm. How can I fix these problems? So I feel like as a coach, my, my job is a, is a fixer by nature. You know, what, whatever the problem is, it's my job as a coach to fix it. And so I feel like that's just kind of applied out to so many other applications and so many people that we've trained in, in, in our gear is so easy to run. I, to be honest, I have 12 year olds that run this gear. Like, so you really can easily have a para or a parent or <laughs> A secretary like this is easy gear to run. And, you know, the interesting thing that I just recently had commented on is that when you get up on the platform, your brain is like, pay attention, don't fall off. Like there's just that little bit of lizard brain that's like, pay attention, you know, sure. and, and there's the connection to the other person holding the rope, you know, the, the safety line. And so I have so many people that actually this was one of our things um, with the police department, even yesterday, talking about how the partner can hold the other end of the rope. And there's a nice connection of trust and safety that, you know, is really a nice connection that we can really expand on with the product and, and people's connections. Interesting. Interesting. So this, so this product, explain it to us a little bit more and some of the science behind it. So it's, 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 it's almost visually crazy to see it, but basically. <laughs> well, we'll have a link. Don't worry. We'll have a link it's, down it's, in the, down in the crazy. podcast description. Yep. 
So, but like, it's basically a 42 pound electric spinner that I can control the speed and the direction. And it just, it spins, you know, and it can spin slowly. Then you'll see that in some of it is very slowly. And then it can spin really, really, really fast. And of course, those are the videos that NASA was fascinated in. But from there, you have two options. You can just stay on the platter you know, as the person on it spinning, um, where we just rotate you. But then there's the other option of you can fly. And that's the sports training side that we can spin you up in the sky. But that's the little piece that's that's the extra brain training of crossing the midline of crossing the feet and crossing the hands. So both sides of your brain are active. It's the axis. It's the balance. You have to balance on your feet. Uh, when and all the research that supports standing on your feet and learning versus sitting on your butt and learning, you know, it's two totally <laughs> yeah. different numbers, two totally different numbers. Axis balance, the proprioception of tracking your feet, knowing where you are in space, eye training, it's it's all spinning and you've got to keep track of it. Uh, we actually are just, I'm just in the early process of teaming up with NeuroTracker, you know, okay. a, a fantastic company, but once again, eye training as the balls are moving and their research is stunning on the difference of sitting on your butt and learning and doing NeuroTracker standing Two totally different scores when you have to add in balance for your brain and activity. Interesting. So how do, so, so, so help bring this right to, to the, to the average hearing healthcare provider who's got a 67 year old male who might be, you know, slightly overweight, has diabetes, has hearing loss, and is concerned of falling, fell recently, and is really worried about another potentially catastrophic fall. How does this, how do I implement something like this? So you're going to love this. So it's just five minutes. So I actually just worked with my mom, 75 years old, whole bunch of falls was acting 85, you know, Mm -hmm. and so and and her driving skills had dropped and, you know, all of these cognitive things were affecting. So she worked with me um, twice a week because the results really, when you first start with me last about three days. Okay. So she worked with me twice a week. But at that six to eight week mark is when it really stuck. But that's when other PTs and OTs, uh, I'm on the same timeline as everybody else working neurological and balance issues. That six to eight week window is the big window of success. And then from there, she just dropped down to once a week, five minutes, you know, and she's even skipped a couple of weeks because now at 75, she's acting 65. (laughs) Right now, she's on a river cruise in Europe. And uh, she just came back from Cabo for two weeks with her girlfriends. You know, I mean, so like my mom's living her her life again, when after all those falls and the scariness of those falls really was was bringing us this way, not this way. So So I I don't I don't I certainly don't want to oversimplify, but your mom stood on a plate, spun around a few times, and now she's 20 years acting 20 years younger. Yes, it's crazy. Okay. Like, like, even I'm impressed with the results. But so the interesting part is it's much easier because most of us are right ear dominant. So when, when you like lean in, I have a secret. You lean in with your right ear. So in that, that counterclockwise direction is easier for the brain to balance with that right ear on the axis. So so I'll have her do like five turns to counterclockwise. Then the hard way, five turns clockwise resting in between, and then we'll go five more turns counterclockwise. And we use a balance mat from a company called Body Tracks, B-O-D-I-T-R-A-K. And boy, my mom's balance numbers, I'll throw that into the links here for you too. But my mom's balance numbers are two totally different numbers of pre and post tests. And so is with yesterday's police officer. And so is with my athletes. And so is with my aging community. Uh, it, we the balance changes. So, so what is your? How does this work? Again, I, I've got this patient, and I want to get them to you. So, I just I go to Spring Your Brain. I find Sheila on LinkedIn. Like, what does that referral process look like? And then, once the handoff is made, what's next? 
So I have a training room here in Minneapolis. Okay. Um, so like Minneapolis, Minnesota, but I'm actually meeting with some, I, I won't say the name, but with a huge uh, PT company in the United States with over 200 locations, <clears throat> uh, I'm actually meeting with them next week. So we should be able to get those out to 200 locations throughout the States that then that way you can go to that location and of course use the products. Okay. Okay. But, but as of right now, if I'm not in Minneapolis, is that, is this something that you have yeah, it's, off-site? It's really, you could- yes. So I'm, I'm a location here in Minneapolis. I also have um, installations all over the world, but okay. I have some in Manchester, uh, Manchester, England. I also have a full set in uh, Mumbai. You know, uh, it is kind of fun. I just got in with uh, in uh, several locations in Australia. Uh, it, it is really Kind of. So is it is it ultimately your goal to get these spinning plates, if you will, uh, to get them into healthcare practices or in individual homes? Really, healthcare practices. Okay. Yes, they're in individual homes. Yes, we have that too. For sure, that's an option. Um, and a lot of times, even in athletes, the parents are like, it, "It's." affordable gear in the world of gear, you know? So with that, uh, it's always expensive, you know, in the world sure. of gear, but, um, but yeah, yes, for sure. We're in people's homes, but really we do want healthcare groups. And, and I recently was connected to some EMDR specialists, you know, so like with that, that's really exciting work with trauma in, uh, PTSD is is really exciting work, but obviously getting it in with those professionals to really apply it to their industries. Is- and so the obvious question for any 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 healthcare professional or anybody running that type of business would be: Is this something that can be built for? What type of restrictions are there on that, or is it all out of pocket? How does that work? So I think everyone's in different scenarios, but okay. I'm told by several PTs for sure there is a billing code within the healthcare system of for insurance that you can bill for vestibular. And of course, even the balance mat that we use, you know, you could use that as diagnostic billing for pre and post test. Okay. So th- th- there's always codes it, um, and they're not specific to vestibular training services. They're just nice generic codes that you could yeah. use for billing. I know that that in terms of hearing healthcare, from what I know, and I may be wrong, and I might get beat over the head by a vestibular audiologist after this, but I think that our limit in terms of coding, we sort of stop at the door of diagnostics. Mm-hmm. And, and I appreciate, though, that you can include the mat in terms of diagnosis, in terms of treatment, is where there's always been some restriction. But hey, look, that doesn't mean that people aren't willing to pay for it, right? I mean, if you're if you're dizzy and it's affecting your life and really decreasing, if not destroying your quality of life, then it's worth every penny if it's, you know, if you have to charge or pay out of pocket. <laughs> You'll laugh. I probably shouldn't say this. I charge my athletes 10 bucks. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> 10 bucks a time, you know? So like in the world of, of course, sports and healthcare, uh, I bill $10. <laughs> well, I could, and I could certainly see this being applicable to, to concussions. So what's your work with concussions and, and vets coming home with, you know, traumatic brain injuries? What does that look like? So I've been working with several uh, NFL alumni, and wow, it's, I have to tell you, I, I think as a society, we always assume those NFL and those sports guys, okay, maybe they had a bad ACL or they had bad back pain from years of playing football or their shoulder hurt, boo-hoo, like nobody cared. But really, that's not the case. That's the least of their problems. Um, it's, it's really hundreds and hundreds of concussions, especially, you know, and, and oh my goodness, the research. Um, um, I'm not sure if you've seen Will Smith's uh, concussion movie, phenomenal, where it talks about Dr. Bennett Amalu, um, which I have to add, he fo- Dr. Bennett Amalu follows me on LinkedIn. So I'm like, oh, I'm so cool. <laughs> <laughs> How exciting. But, you know, like to see the groups, um, you know, this, po- this post-concussion work with hundreds of concussions, I would almost say, and, and that they almost present as autistic, you know, okay. like, like when you're dealing with them, you know, they can't tell a story. They're, they're, they're struggling in their daily lives. And 
to see the changes uh, when they work with me, obviously balance. Cause you, know, when you talk about vestibular, you really talk about three main factors of balance, cognitive processing speed and non-spatial disorientation. And, and there's other pieces to it too. And the OT community will be like, Sheila, you oversimplified it. There, there's literally, you know, 40 things that it affects, but, but really those three key factors are the ones that, that we really look at in our company. So we, we are working with, um, I have one of my former students that flies now uh, U.S. Army helicopters okay. and talks about that proprioception and, and being alert, you know, and, and being able to feel the helicopter, especially in those last 30 feet as the sand's blowing up and she can't see the ground. And, you know, as you get rotor disruption and you get ground disruption, you know, that she doesn't tip, you know, that she can feel that perfectly come down and the safety of the crew. But as we talk about post-concussion, of course, we talk military. And we've actually teamed up with the Geneva Foundation that's based out of Fort Bragg that's that's kind of helping us through the process of, of really teaming up with the U.S. military. So we're in that process, but boy, it's a hard process. So any of the people out there that have dealt with military contracts. Oh, and, I could and, imagine. For me, <laughs> <laughs> it's a nightmare, you know, but like uh, the process has been overwhelming, but we are in the process of working with the U.S. military. It's, it's coming. That's fantastic. It's not there, but it's coming. Well, yeah, the things, uh, in case you haven't realized, the uh, government moves pretty slow. <laughs> right, so if anyone else so look, it's such a, <laughs> it's such a valuable tool and a valuable resource for these vets and and not even just i mean obviously the tbi the concussion but also for the the you know relatively normal vestibular systems in those situations where you mentioned how vital your vestibular orientation is to the safety of not just the person but perhaps everybody around them mm -hmm. it, it's fascinating well and the other little piece too that i really haven't hit on it's fun. And especially like, I feel like my vets love doing it because at the base of them are really elite athletes. You know what right. I mean? Like, oh yeah. They, they really, when you look at a vet, you really got to look at an elite athlete and, you know, and really it's fun to use the gear and they, and I don't want to say it's addictive, but you do want to come back. You do want to, okay. but then you can be getting other services that would be also key. So same thing, work with my gear for five minutes, but then they could be getting so many other services at the same time. That is all part of the success. Interesting. So there's really not, it sounds like there isn't a limit as to where this technology can be used. Well, if you have a brain, it seems like <laughs> we're working with you. You know what I mean? And, and that was kind of the stunning part of like, who says they have a product that really can can help everyone, you know, but like, really, I've been with three-year-olds through the aging community and everything in between. And the adventure is really just beginning for us. Tell me more about the work with, with, uh, with uh, children on the spectrum diagnosed with autism. I'm, I'm fascinated by that and, and how this would really apply. Like I, I'm trying to make those connections in my head and I can't get there. So um, I was just in the UK um, at a at a company called Jump Space, and their director uh, works with. I, I've worked with autistic children before, but these were some really profoundly autistic children. And um, we sat down, and we had we had all the gear installed, and we're in this place called Jump Space. And the director sits me down. She goes, "You know, the children won't come to you. You know, you don't belong here. You have a weird accent. You're not from the UK. <laughs> you sound funny as an American. Um, you're super short. You, you don't look like you've a teacher. You know, like like they're like the children won't come to you. You know. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I had 39 children work with me. They all stood in line patiently waiting for their turn. They loved it. I got every single kid into a true look. We call it a backspin, like with their hands crossed, their feet perfectly crossed, spinning. And the children squealed with laughter and happiness, joy. They all wanted to do more. Uh, it was, it was really cute. The interesting thing, here's one for you. Of all the children, and some of them actually spun, okay, a hundred turns, like up in the air, like a hundred turns, like they just kept spinning. They loved it. And they didn't get dizzy. 
That's so, very interesting. And I thought there, there's some research there for all you researchers out there. How really, I really couldn't get these profoundly autistic children dizzy. They they popped off that spinner and were just fine and went back in line to stand in line to do it again. Do it again. Yeah. yeah and, <laughs> they wanted more. <laughs> and they, and more. And the cutest thing was so many thanked me and I was in several of the children hugged me, which the, the director was just like, what? You know, yeah. Like, yeah, they hugged me and, you know, cause they had such a fun time and they enjoyed it. And, and once again, really those children with autism that, that, that spin, you know, like, like, you know, you know, spin and turn and turn and turn, you know, even on their feet, it's like, they know what they need and they just can't get enough of it. So really on my gear, they really can get that huge vestibular load. Wow. That, that they they crave, you know, especially in a sensory sense. And so but what uh, tell me, tell me about some of the studies, if any, that your company has run or is running to really sort of back up this this data, because it's, it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. And if this could be, you know, the the quote unquote magic bullet for people who are dealing with dizziness and, and a, sometimes yeah, it sounds, debilitated by it. It sounds crazy. You're dizzy. We should speak. We should spin you more. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, I would say please Doesn't don't. It sounds crazy. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but like once again, it's that horizontal, vertical, and yaw that they can move their heads through this through our whole program, um, in, in our gear. But the answer is um, there's forty seven thousand articles and papers on vestibular. Forty seven thousand already published, so it's it it's there. Okay, um, and then. I have a PhD research coordinator, Dr. Erica Olson, uh, who joins my team and she handles all of our research papers. So I hand them all over to her and she's coordinating. Presently, we have 10 to 14 papers in progress and soon to be published. Um, But I joke 47,000 and 10 should change your mind. You know, like our 10, (laughs) 47,000 didn't convince you that the vestibular is powerful. Um, but our 10 will change the world. So, yeah, so. That's fair. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the point is, right, yes, there's there's lots of data in terms of the balance system. But in terms of this this device, I, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm excited for it. And, and anything you have, I will definitely be putting links in the description for this. I want everybody to visit spinyourbrain.com. So whether you see yourself as the as the dizzy patient or you're the healthcare provider working with people who have issues with dizziness and balance disorders, I strongly encourage you reach out to Sheila. As she said, she's on LinkedIn uh, quite often, even when she's traveling the world, giving her presentations, working with patients and go to spinyourbrain.com. Sheila, thank you so much for being here today. This has been a uh, great information i think not just for for our regular listeners but even beyond that so thank you thank you so much i'm so grateful and and what an opportunity thank you so much take care sheila